Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for another edition of NSR Wrestling. I'm Peck. I'm Chris. And uh, we got a couple things to uh, talk about on the docket here today. We're going to talk about the failure and delay once again of the WWE Network to launch, and also recap what's been going on with TNA and preview what's coming up for TNA Wrestling. Yeah. You want to go on the network? Yeah. Well, uh, WWE recently announced that they're pushing back the start of the uh, WWE network release that was you know they had promised us it was going to be this year's wrestlemania this past wrestlemania it didn't happen they had talked about launching it sometime in november it still didn't happen they were talking about it for wrestlemania again same thing my problem is i i don't think it's one of those things that can really take off i mean wrestling fans themselves are a really niche market i know it's really crap uh, you know, I mean, it's it's a hard thing to market a TV based entirely on a theatrical art, basically. You know, I mean, it's, yeah. it's and here's the real question: wrestling fans, we get screwed enough having to pay money for pay per views, do we not? Yeah. Why should we have to pay money for a network when we already have WWE programming for free, as crappy as it is, for? what now six hours because of the saturday morning show because we have three hours of raw two yeah. hours of smackdown and now an hour-long show on saturday mornings so what's the point of the network this is that whole like too hot the track cramp where they try to go over themselves and think they're so big same thing with the world body uh body lifting world federation same thing with the xfl same thing with their stupid movies that aren't working they always try to like overdo themselves when they should just stick with wrestling and i like that because it costs the money and i'm not a fan of the promotion so it doesn't matter to me but i mean it's just it's not good business sense and the well, other thing yeah. too is um some of the programming a legends-based reality show not bad but what i, I mean give us how more realistic that. is gonna yeah. is it gonna be i mean it's going to be scripted. It's going to be filtered. They're not going to be allowed to talk about a lot of the stuff that happened outside of WWE that these people were even famous for. I mean, you look at the cast of it, it's not really... Well, it's all the same old guys. I don't want to see the Iron Sheik, Jim Duggan, Ricky Steamboat, you know, Piper and Gene Okerlund and somebody else. I don't care. I don't want to see really Roddy don't. Piper and Ricky Steamboat lower themselves to the point of being on a WWE-based reality show. Yeah, I mean, they're just going to get the, you know, whoever's left in the back, they're going to throw in the, you know, in the front. It's just, it's... But see, I've been, they've been talking about a, a wrestling channel since about 2004 that I've heard, like, publicly. And, you know, we got the on-demand thing. What's wrong with that? That's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, don't, I don't think yeah. it's feasible as a network. They always have to screw up what they're good at, and that's what's going to end up crippling them. And the when it gets tacked on to other people's cable packages that aren't wrestling fans, yeah, they're not going to want it. I mean, they're going to be like, what is this? It's what? like the golf channel. I mean, for people that don't watch golf, it's a waste of a channel. Well, it's stupid because they keep buying these video libraries, and then they never show the video footage. They never show the AWA on there. They're going to buy the Universal Wrestling Federation. They just started recently to show a little bit of Stampede and their old 70s footage. But, you know, if you're going to buy these libraries... Use them. Use them and release the freaking, uh, you know, yearly shows on DVD. I would love to see, um, you know, that WCCW year one, every show from the first year. Do that. Don't, you know, give us some half-ass... You know, documentary or some stupid, you know, half hour like recap show or something on your network. Because who are they to tell us what matches are good and what matches aren't? Well, like, they... I'll give you an example. The best of uh, WWE 2011 2012 contains two big show matches. Your best of any year DVD should never contain one big show match. Exactly. And I mean, that's the problem with WWE. You yeah, know, I mean, they selectively enforce what they want us to watch and it's not really what the fans want exactly and that's what they never do they never do what the fans want they tell you what you want and that's the biggest problem with that company I mean, my god they made a Zack Ryder DVD the guy's been relevant for all of a year mm -hmm. and it's an hour long DVD with what four matches on it I mean who cares how do you even tell the story of Zack Ryder well he used to look like Edge and now he's this um who cares? Shore rep. yeah I mean really who he, cares? he's not relevant no and he's been there I mean, I've and seen him on TV for five years. Job them out, and then that's it. No one cares. I mean, dead before it even starts. Right, and it just seems like they claim to be new and groundbreaking and entertaining. They're circling back to the exact same positions they were in last year. The only difference being CM Punk is a heel this time, and he's still fighting John Cena. And that's my other problem with WWE. Ever since CM Punk went on his little rant and sat there on the stage in his Austin t-shirt and got famous because of it, he just thinks he's God's gift to wrestling, and he isn't. 
Well, I mean, no, you know. I mean, when you, well, I mean, okay, yes, he's a great wrestler. I can't deny that. But when you have the same match over and over with the same opponents and you wrestle them three times at the pay per view, you claim you're the best in the world, and they won't even give you the main event at any pay per view, and they give it to Cena in a match with no title or Triple H and Brock Lesnar. What are you doing? You know, it makes no sense. Well, as far as I'm right, he know. weighs in on everything and that he really has no business commenting on. He called TNA a minor league organization, which you Get really lost. can't afford to do that because of the quality of the wrestling. Yeah, and plus that's, you know, where you were getting a paycheck from for a while, so, you know. Right, let's not forget that. And, you know, if you want to talk minor league wrestling, you belong to Ring of Honor for how long? But really, I mean, let's let's face the facts, CM Punk. What have you sold out? I don't know. Have you had, have you sold out a lot of merchandise? Have you made any money off it? No. Have you really done anything that's really significant in professional wrestling that will go down in history books like a Bruno San Martino, Luthez, Hulk Hogan? No. So, I mean, let's face the facts. You're just, you know, a corporate stooge right now. And if you're going to get your legitimacy back or whatever, you got to get out of WWE. I mean, your merchandise sales are great. They're right up there with Cena. But now that you've turned heel, all those kids are going to turn against you and they're not going to buy your stuff. And it's just, it's annoying. Because these guys, they all know better. But they just, they worship the almighty dollar and then they just, you know, throw their careers away essentially, you know. Well, the thing is, they failed to make a lot of new stars. SmackDown ratings are tanking left and right. Sheamus, <laughs> as good of an athlete as he is, he's not a draw. They keep having to fight Alberto Del Rio, who doesn't Another deserve one. to be champion or be in the title hunt that much. I mean, I don't see it. Whenever he first came, I said, this guy should not be world champion. He doesn't have it. I, I'm not impressed with him. No, and I mean, the cross arm breaker is cool, but it got convincingly less effective the more he does it he changed it up and now it just looks like he's trying to hump the guy's elbow well these guys know all, all know how to wrestle they all know what they're doing but they can't do anything because the storylines and Vince McMahon and the writers hold them back and so, the McMahon's Senate campaign let's yeah. not forget that that's what's dooming us to PG rated wrestling in WWE for more time plus there's the fact I mean Kane's getting up there Undertaker wrestles what two dates a year Brock yeah I'm Lesnar, sick of them I'm sick of all of them Brock Lesnar's a terrible in-ring performer there's no new stars, no, at, or at really least is. new stars that we care about. I mean, Ziggler, but uh, the ship has sailed. I mean, you know, you could have made him champion so many times, and you haven't. Yep, same thing like Kenny Dystra, like, you know, all those other guys. Uh, I really wouldn't mention Kenny Dystra. I like that guy. that could have been a star. I think he could have. he does have a pinfall victory over Ric Flair. Let's not forget that. Well, he just, got, Rock. he just got politically buried. I think you supposedly know. you heard about the whole thing between him and Cena and his girlfriend yeah. Nikki James. Well, John Cena can take a walk, in my opinion. He's not a good wrestler. He's just a you know a campaign and marketing machine. In defense of John Cena, though, as a celebrity, as a draw, he gets on my He nerves. does very well. I mean, I don't care that he's a terrible wrestler as long as he makes the company money. You know, I don't personally dislike him. I just don't like his character. Yeah, I don't think he's a good wrestler. I don't. He think isn't. But I, I, I will say this though. He has one good match every year, and thank God he picks that match to be WrestleMania. Yeah. They always give him somebody he can work with, like The Rock, you know. But he should be able to work with somebody else. Like, he should be able to carry talent, but well, he can't. Well, he can't. You, you know you're going to get a John Cena match that goes over 20 minutes long when you see a lot of headlocks yeah. going back and forth. He's just sloppy. He's embarrassing. I, I would never, even, you wouldn't pay me enough money if I do wrestling to ever step in the ring with him. <laughs> I don't care if we're making money. It's just embarrassing. Well, you want to talk embarrassing, talk Daniel Bryan. I mean, they're just, he's Who a waste cares? of life. Why should we care? He can't get over it. He has no charisma. He's everything that's wrong with indie wrestling. He's a stereotype. I, 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 really, I don't see it. I don't see why people care. It's just. There's no direction in that company. There are three things I hated about wrestling. Steve Austin was responsible for two of them. The what chance? Mm -hmm. They're annoying. Calling Lance Storm boring. When he yeah. isn't. And Daniel Bryan's stupid, ridiculous yes champ. And and sometimes I understand, like, you know, the Austin whole boring thing. That probably was out of his control. But, uh, you know, it was all the writers and Vince McMahon. You know, in the end, Vince McMahon has the final say. But, you know, Vinny, Vinny Mac, if you're running the show... <laughs> you know what? No, he doesn't. Because if attention. Vince McMahon was in control, I honestly believe the company would be in better shape. Triple H doesn't know what the hell he's doing. His best friends are champion, like Sheamus. I mean, he's just not that good. It's a car writing. He's, you know... He's like, well, I need to take time away from wrestling to focus on this. No, you're steering them directly into the ground. You haven't come up with anything new. You want to fight The Undertaker again at WrestleMania, and this will be 0-4 for you. I've had enough of that. I think Taker needs to go. Hey, watch it. I'm sick of it. Why should I care? Why should I? I don't care. Okay, but 
outside, I don't care. outside of WrestleMania, when he has a chance to lose, is he not a good draw? Does he is he not a great? But he's all hype. He's all hype. He can still perform. He's, in the ring, he's almost forty. So I'm shaving his head because he has no hair left. He's I mean, forty-five, but he, he's had. He's able to go for thirty minutes max. I have, honestly I have more respect for Sting. Sting can go, and he's still almost as much a part of that show as anybody else. No Sting offense to the Undertaker. More regular schedule at seven years older than the Undertaker. I give you that. I think no I offense to Taker. That. I'm sure he's hurting stuff, but I just don't care anymore. Well, the other thing too is when you're that big. Your body breaks down more easily, and, ex and that's why I think he should, he should just be done. He should just kill whoever, bury no, them, and no, call no. it a day. You've got to understand though, because of his legacy, other than Hulk Hogan and Steve Austin and The Rock, he's that single most memorable character they've ever had. I mean, I get it. Deny that. I mean, he's like the anti-Hulk Hogan. He's. I mean, I get it, but if you're gonna come back once a year, then you shouldn't really be wrestling. If you can't go anymore, you can't go. Okay, what about The Rock? He comes back once a but year, but he can still go. If they wanted him to. So can The Undertaker. People still pay tickets. You don't hear people complaining when he wrestles. Except but he, you. But he can't work the schedule anymore. So what? He's he, really no use. I, mean, I, don't, okay. I don't want to see him in Mania. I have Give the younger guy the spot. No. Because the younger guy isn't making the company any money and isn't any good. But he can't make the company any money if the old guys still stick around like Michael's Taker. He can Triple H. he feuds with him and that's how he builds his career. Look at Randy Orton. Randy Orton had a match with The Undertaker. After he was world champion, granted, but did that not propel him to another level of superstardom, even though he lost? Mark Henry lost to The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Did that he didn't... not later become world heavyweight champion? Well, he just pushed them one, so I don't even think he still, did. I don't Batista, think that match happened to help them. I wouldn't say it hurt yeah. him. I mean, would you have honestly ever said that, you know, he does, He was one of the people that deserved to work, uh, you know, an opponent like The Undertaker at WrestleMania before that? No. I just, I just think Undertaker's out of his prime, and he just doesn't look like The Undertaker anymore. Oh, I mean, we'll he looks like some old dude in tights, that, you know. It's just he doesn't look like the character anymore. He's just too old. He's still there. I mean, but but that's the problem. I mean, they, they, and, I mean, I haven't watched it in years. And yeah, I don't. Neither watch have it. a lot of people that I'm friends with in my age group. I'm 23. I know a lot of people that said they haven't watched it since 2007 because of how bad it's gotten. How many people have left, or retired, or died? So. Like I have, I'll tell you about my friend Jay, for example. He's a huge Rock fan. He shelled out sixty-five dollars to buy WrestleMania, which, by the way, is ridiculous for that pay-per-view. Way too much. And uh, he said the only reason he did was because of the Rock and the Undertaker. And you know, he he was happy with those two matches. Otherwise, like I don't know who the hell these people are. They suck. Yeah, that, that's another problem. That's a whole other topic. Pay-per-view prices are they worth it? No. No, they're not. Not that I would advocate theft, but. If you do have the opportunity to use a website and you're happy with poor quality instead of a television, you know, that's up to you as the consumer. I'm not going to judge you either way because, you know, quite frankly, there are some pay-per-views that just aren't worth money. Yeah, and you can just go buy it when it comes out like a month later for $20 in the store. Three months, yeah, something yeah. like that. But, you know, but... uh Moving on to wrestling that actually matters, let's talk about yeah. TNA and what's been going on with them. And here's the one thing. We did complain that it was kind of going in the pooper, but you know what? This whole summer brought it back, I feel. Well, it did and it didn't. Yeah. Uh, you and I both agree that, I mean, we like Austin Aries. We think he's a great guy, world probably champion. good wrestler, yeah. He's a good world champion, but the question is why now? Yeah, not now. Why not were now. you booking Rude so strong and then this upstart comes along and beats you when Sting couldn't beat you two or three times. Rob Van Dam couldn't beat you, and all of a sudden Austin Aries is able to defeat you. Yeah, bad booking, bad bad booking. And you know, I mean, granted, it's an awful long time for them to string along a uh, James Storm Bobby Roode thing for Bound for Glory. I mean, they're probably going to end up ultimately fighting not for the belt, but I feel like it should be involved. But you know what, though, it's so personal between them. Maybe the belt's not needed. I guess, but I just, I don't understand it. You know, this is TNA all over again. We don't understand. And, like, even the fact that we don't understand, it's like... It's the timing of the whole Aces and Ace thing that we don't understand and the world yeah. title situation, because why is this still in flux it's, one month before Bound It's for always Glory? bad timing with them. Right. I mean, uh, I watched Impact Thursday, which was live. This wasn't like a taping. This wasn't like they knew what was going on four weeks before we did. Yeah. That night, they added a card to the TNA pay-per-view, which is this Sunday, four days away. At the end of the program, they, always they do just that. randomly break in, and Taz and Mike Tanay says, Oh, by the way, Taz, big news, uh, Rob Van Dam will be facing Magnus. No build-up, no storyline, 
no contact between the two of them. RVD lost to some, uh, actually, uh, Bully Ray because of a uh, Baba Cutter when he tried a Frog Splash. No real inkling that those two would even be on the card, and all of a sudden it just gets randomly added in there, and now we have another match at uh, we, uh, No Surrender. Why do they do that? I, I, I really don't... I, mean, I don't hate that. Wrong. That's one of the ones that would make me watch it, but in my mind, try Build to build it up. up because you have a name in there, and you have a young potential star in Magnus. You know, don't just tack something like that that big on at the end of the day. People are, you know, they didn't even, you know, know about that match and they're shelling out money for this. You should know that's a match that would go into my pro and con decision of am I going to buy this pay per view or not. Well, it's like I hate and it. And that would be a pro. They always break up good tag teams quickly. That Joe team. and Magnus Joe and were Magnus. amazing. Yeah, and um, I like Styles and Angle, but the problem is they're too big a stars to put back together as a tag team. They're, they're on life support with the tag team division. It's all makeshift. Well, no, or they have fly by night They teams. have Gunner and Kid Cash, and I think that's it. Though. Really good though. Everyone else is if they, crap. I just wish they would give them a face push. I honestly think there's. Do you think there's too many heels in TNA or not enough? I go back and forth. I, I, we need more of a mix. We need about five to seven more guys. But I that's where this aces and eights is coming in. I think we need more heels in the singles division and more faces in the tag team and X division because yeah. the X division is just gutted. I mean, Zima Island's your champion. Ugh. It sucked when I saw him and I didn't him see off, his name off was, of there. And his name was uh, Zima or uh, Shima's Island. I hated him. You know, it's getting on my nerves. Like, I like the X division, but I'm, I'm getting sick of the flips and all this crap. Just wrestle. Well, I mean, you could do the flips and stuff, but do normal wrestling moves. Like they all want to flip the flyer. Yeah, they else, do all this you know? goofy I mean, crap. I'm go, so sick of it. Go back to the roots and have a high-speed match like, you know, Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles did. You know, incorporate real wrestling moves and not just these ridiculous dives. Yeah. It's, and then when Jesse Neal... I mean, they're just giant spot fests. Then Jesse Neal's going to come back and probably win the belt. Who cares? Uh, really? They're also doing this, you know, ongoing Aces and Aids motorcycle gang angle, and we don't know who the leader is. I personally think it's Abyss. Chris thinks it's Jeff Jarrett. We're praying to God it's not any of the Bischoffs. I don't want the sloppy booking like that. They always do. It's always Jarrett or Bischoff or the obvious. Bring in somebody. And you know what? The quality of the show was honestly much better after Hogan had back surgery and wasn't on the show for a while. I know. I don't like his presence. I don't care. I don't think he's worth $2 million a year. I hated him as a wrestler. I understand he made money, but that was because of fools that just bought into his character. I really don't like Hulk Hogan. I don't care. Well, you know. A lot of people disagree with me on that, but, I mean, you look at, you know, actual in-ring wrestling. I'm a wrestling fan, not an entertainment fan. Exactly. Sting is always going to be better than Hulk Hogan. He will. Uh... Speaking of other watered-down divisions, women's division, man, they're losing everybody left and right. They are, and they're not adding enough people. No. Well, they brought in, what, that Tiffany girl from ECW? But... Yeah, and they made a referee, which is really nice, because I yeah, didn't enjoy seeing her in that. No, not at all. We don't mind. And, and, you know, she's new, and, and they kind of put her in a good position where she's not really going to hog a lot of the limelight. Yeah, but, I mean, she can serve her purpose. Just don't turn her heel. Yeah. Yeah, I think face is good for her, but, I mean, they're losing what... That is an innovative idea, though, because they never had a woman ref for the women's division, you know? In yeah. any promotion, and I always kind of wondered about that, and TNA was the first one to do that. I'm kind of, you know, that's Very actually kind of cool. We're proud of you. Um, I don't know. I mean, what, Winter left. They just... Winter left. Angelina Love left. Velvet, Velvet Sky, Sky left. Velvet Sky was a big loss for them, though, because you look at, like, promotional posters and things like that. I mean, she was their biggest seller. I'm sick of Tara. I'm sick of all the WWE. Tara can still wrestle, though. But I'm sick of all the WWE wash-ups. Like, I don't want to see them anymore. I want new talent. Yeah, I agree with that. So, I mean, they, that's when they started this in 07. They brought all these girls, and they were all new to us. They were yeah. all oh, yeah. new talent. Taylor so. Wilde and Sarita. Sarita's been working a lot in Mexico now in yeah. Japan, so we haven't seen much of her. I could do without Rosita. Who cares? I mean, it was on fire like three years ago, the women's division. I think everybody. But the upcoming pay-per-view, we get the end of the Bound for Glory series with uh, Jeff Hardy against Samoa Joe. That's something different, even though they just had the same match on Impact this week, and uh, Hardy won. And then they have uh, Bully Ray and James Storm. Thank God they're not doing a... Hardy and Storm again. Oh. I, personally, I'm picking Bully Ray, and I'm hoping he wins the whole series and wins the Belt of Bound for Glory just because... Well, he does deserve it. I mean, it, the improvement level, I mean, but it, it's just so confusing. When they first split up the Dudleys, we said they're both done, they'll be fired in four months, and he got himself in a great shape, turned into one of the best heels, had some great hardcore matches, and, you know, just saying he's still there and Devon Dudley doesn't have a contract. What's that tell you? Yeah. I mean... You know, it's Devon Dudley, yeah, hard worker, great guy. 
didn't deserve to be television champion, didn't need to wrestle on pay-per-views. I'm sick of the wash-ups. Like, I don't want to see these guys. I want new talent. You know, and, and I'm just tired of these. Or when they have new talent, I want them to be elevated. I don't want to see Magnus lose almost every single match he's in. I don't want to see Robbie E get turned into a joke. I don't want to see Rob Terry be his manager, never wrestle anybody, and never actually be in a match. Well, it's like, here's the difference, too, like, when the WCW, XWF, MLW, when they, and other promotions, when they brought in guys for, like, the revamps, and they brought in older talent, it was people you wanted to see. It wasn't like guys past their prime you were sick of, you know? And we're pushing it down your throats. Like, Jerry, the Dudleys, Tyson Tomko. I mean, these guys I didn't care about. They just kept pushing them and it's pushing pretty bad them. When Ring Cage, of Honor, Christian Cage, my God, no. I don't like Christian. And he's all. coming back for BFG to induct Sting into the Hall of Fame, which is disgusting. Well, yeah. I I mean, just, I'm so sick of it. It's, it's pretty sad when someone was with your company for, what, three years and was your world champion twice and, you know, going back in terms of your legacy and he's the one that's inducting Sting. He did nothing. And he's a current WWE yes. employee. That makes that, That's a slap in the face, honestly. He they might be the best of friends. I still don't think it's a good idea. Well, he didn't do anything for the company. You know, I mean, well, did, I mean, you can't say he didn't do anything, but his contributions were limited, let's say, nine, compared Jesus. to some of the other people. But the question is, who could you have do it? Because Jeff Jarrett's an active wrestler. Yeah, it's tough. I uh, mean, you know, I mean, uh, why don't they just have Dixie Carter do it? She runs the fucking thing for Christ's sake. That or Flair was still there, but yeah, that's not gonna happen. No, he's not a team player. But um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think they do need some new talent. They bring in Chava Guerrero, who I don't care about. Yeah, what once I was again, to make was I mean, Ring of Honor brings in people we actually care about: Finley, Lance Storm, exactly, Rhino, old guys that can still go. Rhino's getting a world title shot against Kevin Steen. He's not going to win. They and do they it right. Steve Carino. I mean, why didn't TNA reach out? I mean, reach out to any of those people. My God, Finley versus Kurt Angle—that would have been huge. You know what's not there? The money's not there in the budget. And the TV is, time. Okay, yeah, but the money's not in ROH either because obviously that's why I said ROH. Yeah, that's what I was talking about ROH when they brought in the guys. No one no, really knows because the money's not there. All those people are still there though. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, why didn't Finley go to TNA? I mean, that'd be awesome. I know, but you figure too. I mean, he's getting out there. Who cares? He can still go. WWE never should have taken him out of uh, active wrestling and made him a road agent. That's not what he's good at. Yeah, I don't. I, I never understood why he just didn't come for the invasion because he came right when that whole thing was going on. And WWE has done wrong by a lot of great wrestlers. William Regal. Yeah, they wasted him. I mean, they made him, you know, they, they made him a caricature and just had him do all these ridiculous backstage segments when he's a really good wrestler. I know. It's just, it's WWE. They, either they see it or they don't, and they just, you know. And getting back to the TNA pay-per-view, I mean, uh, really not that many matches. You know, we have... Eight uh, matches. We have Angles and Styles uh, going up against Kaz and Daniels, who I don't think should lose the belts yet. I yeah, I mean, they, they, they haven't even defended them. Going. Yeah, they have. They just defended them Thursday. Did they? I mean, before that, though, I mean, it's been months. Yeah, pretty much. I think since Slammiversary, those guys actually defended the belts. Yeah. Um, Bad. Yeah, I did. I mean, uh, X Division, you have uh, Zima Ion versus Sanjay Dutt. Why the hell does Sanjay Dutt yeah. get an X Division title shot? Is he even, he's not even with the company. Do enough people even know who he is to consider him a face to root against Zima Ion? No who cares? cares? Yeah, no one cares. They got what, Van Dam against Magnus? If I put a string over a puddle of water, Sanjay Dutt couldn't get over it. Oh my god, terrible. Magnus versus Van Dam, that should be good. We have, uh, you know, the BFG series that I announced, and uh, the big guy, Festus, from Aces and Eights, yes. is uh, just going to fight Austin Aries. So your champion's not even defending the belt at your pay-per-view. Obviously, this we've dubbed this card We Surrender, because we have no interest in it at all, except for what it's going to do for Bound for Glory. Yeah, he might as well surrender, man. Don't yeah. he? If you look, I mean, it really doesn't seem like one a lot of people buy. It's just so forgettable, and it goes back to my theory: don't have pay per views every month. Have six or seven, and be done with it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just just junks it up. Yeah. Plus, the Bound for Glory series seemed like it went on for a really, really long time. My God, they started in what June? I'd rather just see a tournament the whole night and be done with it. Why do we need to have a series? You yeah, know? I mean, why and incorporating live events that people can't even see? It's horrible. 
It's just it's so. And many people get injured. Somebody gets hurt every year. It's a good concept, but it's not because you you burn out fuse that don't even get to happen with it, you know. And TNA has this thing where a lot of wrestlers that were major players have just completely disappeared. Crimson lost to James Storm, and we haven't seen him since. They've mentioned him, but where is he? We know to me it's offensive. Like, okay, you have a Bound for Glory series, so why are these guys so special? Why doesn't the whole company get? Yeah, and you basically have eleven guys that are only allowed to face each other, and no one else on the roster. Yeah, why? And you tied up your one of your tag team champions, and then you remember at the at the Battle Royal there were people that were originally in it that now aren't. D. Yeah. Bond was part of it, and Cass was part of it. Yeah, but now they, they're not. They hushed and that up. De Niro apparently got hurt. Not that I care. It, He's a waste of a contract. Release him, get him out of there. I hated him when he was Elijah Burke. I don't like him more now. Oh, well, he blew it. He proved he couldn't draw or do anything really. Yeah, and. As far as wrestling nicknames go, the Pope, that's not really badass. They got a, I mean, when he comes back, he needs a serious revamp and a manager to just, serve, I mean, if they want to do something with him, if he, he needs a mouthpiece. Back, I hope he doesn't. I hope, you know what, the four months he's on the shelf, good. Who's going to miss him? I won't. Nope. But, uh, I mean, I, I just. We're just curious to see where they're going to go. I mean, you know, it's kind of weird. It doesn't seem like James Storm is going to win it because Bobby Roode's not the champion. It seems like those two are destined to fight a Bound for Glory, which I do want to see. But do you think Austin Aries versus Bully Ray is enough of a draw no, for your main event? It's a, it's a bad idea. It's good for a summer pay per view. Yeah, you but not for your that WrestleMania show. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I want Bully Ray to win it, but I don't. I mean, it's sloppy booking. It's Storm. Gonna to, it's going to have to be Hardy and Aries. That's the yeah. only thing they can do, or have James Storm on it. But I don't want that. It should have been Storm and Rude. That done. Because if you're on a solid booking strategy, that's what it should have been. Stick with the plan. Don't go off. Or, I, and, and plus, this X Division garbage, this Ultimate X pay per view, whatever the hell it is, is going to ruin the bound for BFG every year because it's going to be that stupid title no, thing. Not really. It's, it's going to get in the way. Be a speed bump because I don't yeah. think. I don't think for the what? next two or three years, I don't think the X Division champion is going to win the belt. I hope they don't. Look, This kind of screwed up everything, I think. I don't think there's anybody they can bring in within the next less than a year that can actually ascend to the status like Austin Aries. Austin Aries is... I don't want to call him a once-in-a-lifetime or a once-in-a-generational type performer, but he's one of those people that when you bring him in, they they get an awful fast track to success. I mean, there are a yeah. couple of wrestlers like that. Sabu, you know, Taker... Mike, well, no, not not even Michaels. Michaels was Intercontinental Champ first, but Lesnar, you know, people like that that end up, you know, really, they've only been there what six, eight months, and they get a world title shot. Well, we'll just see where they're at next year. I'm very curious to see where Austin Aries is going to be at if he's doing the opening match, and we know. No, I don't think so. But I mean, my question is, I don't think he's had enough views to really. No. I mean, put him up against Styles. Put him up against people his size. That'd be a good I mean, view. He still looks like. A He's just doll fighting, you know, like a human. Just not viable right now. It, it's not the right time. No, not for not for your WrestleMania. That's the biggest problem with PNA every year. And it's like, you claim, you know, he's the face of your company now. People remember him most for being ROH World Champion and being your X Division Champion, not... I don't know, yeah. I mean, they were, they were doing an injury angle with his arm, and I can't help but thinking someone else is going to be champion before Bound for Glory. Pretty forgettable. No, but I mean, something I think is going to happen at this pay-per-view, and as a result... They're going to have to have a new champion. That just junks it up, I think. Wait. There you go. You solved the problem. Oh, my God. No, I think I just figured it out. Yeah, you solved the whole story. No, 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 no. No, listen. I, I seriously think I just figured out what's going to happen. Like I said, you figured out the story. <laughs> no, but I even know who's involved. And? Okay. James Thorben is involved in the Bound for Glory series. Is he not? Yes. The... Bound for Glory series finale, we already know, is going to be the main event of this render. Yep. Austin Aries is fighting the big guy from Aces and Aids, which theoretically will be before the main event, even though technically it might be considered a main event. Yeah. There is every opportunity for Austin Aries to be seriously injured, deemed unable to compete within the next 30 days. Mm. Therefore, the Bound for Glory series finale matchup becomes a de facto vacated world title match mm -hmm. James Storm wins says the only man he wants to beat at Bound for Glory is Bobby Roode Aces and Eights either is involved with Bobby Roode or isn't after Bobby Roode or with Bobby Roode and we get Bobby Roode versus James Storm but this time the shoe's on the other foot and what we didn't expect James Storm walks into BFG as champion walks out as champion I could see that 
Maybe I'm too smart for my own good. You might be, yeah, you might have figured And I might have to sit through Austin Aries versus Bully Ray, a match that I saw, and man, I wasn't that thrilled with. You know what I'd rather see is the whole mastermind between the Aces and Eights. The Honky Tonk Man. That would just be genius booking. He's like, I fooled all of you. <laughs> I love him. He's a great guy. Taka Mijinoku, and they were all uh, members of Choppy Choppy PP. Oh, my. We need to make that group back. We need better groups. I, I think what... Um, Three Cal. Yeah, oh, my God. I remember them. Well, you know what? I, I, I want to do one of the shows coming up, though. We have to redo rebooking the whole invasion. What happens? Right. And who we would have brought in. Yeah. But here's just, another just thing, too. To that. Just as a possibility for TNA down the road. Rey Mysterio got hurt again. But do you need... He got a concussion. He's do, you, do you need rev, Do you need merchandise revenue? Yeah, but do he, you need somebody better than Chavo Guerrero to attract the Latin American market? I do know, but do you need a huge star from Mexico to get that population interested? You could bring in other guys from Mexico. There's tons of them. Okay, not past their prime. I don't care that he's past his prime because everybody in TNA is his size, and he can actually wrestle, and he doesn't look like an action figure. I know, but the longevity's not there. You're not going to get doesn't matter. what you want out of him. You're working one show a week. You don't do that many live shows. You give him a contract. You know, Angle doesn't wrestle every house show. Yeah, good it's point. It's more workable. He's not fighting you know, performance-enhanced giants like he is in WWE, and he's not getting hurt every two weeks. I just, it's a big gamble for money that's not really going to amount oh. to it. TNA yeah. doesn't pay anybody anything. I know, but I just feel like the contract's not worth it. For then, him, compared to what he would bring in if he's if they're allowed, because he probably owns that mask trademark or whatever mask they could market for him, he's still among the top sellers. But they probably thought that about Van Dam and Kennedy and all the others, and they really Van Dam though was never honestly a big merchandise seller. Yeah, I don't I think he really him. had a lot. He's of one anywhere. of my favorite wrestlers, but I mean, if you look. I didn't see that many people, even when he was ECW champion, wearing Rob Van Dam t-shirts. They had Sabu, they had Sandman. This was in 2006, 2007, when yeah. I went to the live event when he was champion. Not everybody bought the shirts. I think Miss Tess Mocker is fighting Tara, too, for the title. She is. Yeah, we have that. But, yeah. I mean, only it's about hardcore it. women's wrestling fans that don't view it as just a sideshow or an opportunity to make snacks or pick up the pizza. You know, I course. like Tess Mocker, though. She's really oh, making an too. effort. Mm -hmm. Good wrestling. Good Mike skills, good woman. She really improved. She was really green when she started out, and her matches have gotten progressively better. I just don't know what they're going to do because there's really, I think they're all kind of jumping off. You know, where are they going to go? There's nowhere else to go. I don't know. I mean, I'm just concerned with what's the rest of the Bound for Glory card going to look like, too. Because how are we going to fill this out? Are we going to have Magnus and Joe like we should? See, I wonder if you're going to have like an Aces and Eights like fight. They just, <sighs> something's going to have to happen. They're going to do lockdown or something with them. Yeah, but the thing is, it's like, there's a reason they didn't do the invasion at WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. It makes things too complicated. You have too many players. You don't showcase your own guys. And they're a bunch of people in masks. And they're also a bunch of people in masks that didn't have a great career as a draw. I never went to a Luke Gallows match because it was a Luke Gallows match. Mm -hmm. I didn't care. What are they going to do about, here's another thing, another throw it off subject. What are they going to do about the TV title now? It has been defended. They haven't had an explanation did, about did it. Did want to even lose? I didn't read the results. Never lost. Match. He's still a champion. But it has been defended in like a month. Is he gone? Yeah, he's out of there, man. Did they vacate it? No, there hasn't been any word of it. So I don't know what they're going to do. They even said they might just disappear and they might not come back. I, I could do without it, personally. I don't care. Well, I mean, the title's only as good as the person that's holding it, you know? Yeah, and the last person that held it was Devon. Not the man, the really... title never meant a damn thing. They called it, what, what was it, the Legends title? Legends title, then, then the International the, no, no, or they made title. it the Global title. Global, like, yeah. Okay, well, this is the Global title. Technically, that's a world title. I just... Uh, I mean, I, I give Devon credit, though. He did have great matches. Yeah, but, he did, he did. I mean, he, But, but he's was, not the guy for the belt. You know, Gunner should have had the belt, or, you know, oh, somebody okay, else. I, oh, wow, I almost jumped all over you, because I thought you said Garrett. No, Gunner should have had it. Throw your or, you. or, or, or Magnus, or even Robbie V. E. E, sorry. No, 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 no. The, the, Robbie the under, B is Rob Van Dam. I'm sorry, Robbie. Uh, Ter, Rob Terry. He not, was that Well, champion. Terry, but the other guy, the, the Vegas, or the Jersey Shore sure. guy. Yeah, that's Robbie E. Robbie E, that's what I said. Did I say that? Yeah, I you accidentally Robbie. called him Robbie V. Sorry. That's See, what I mean. That's okay, because so did Mike Tanay when he was calling a Rob Van Dam match. See, just somebody that can, you know, bring something to the belt, you know, so. I don't know. And then what, what do you think about Brooke Hogan in, in there? 
I'm not even allowed to say on air what I think about Brooke <laughs> Hogan, period. So I mean, the girl's gonna... probably trying, but... She... No, I don't even care. She's a Hogan. It's in your DNA to screw everything up. Your son, Hulk Hogan's car crash was better than what she's doing to wrestling. Yeah. Fuck you, Nick Hogan. You ruined the perfectly good Toyota Supra and killed your friend. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I think this was a fun conversation. Yeah. We'll see you next time for more laughs and giggles. And, uh... On that bombshell, we realize the only member of the Hogan family we don't hate is no longer a member of the Hogan family, and that's Linda and all the dogs. There you go. I'm see Peck. you on VH1. Yep, I'm Peck. I'm, I'm somebody. Have a good night. <laughs>